Hi, everyone. Welcome to Network Capital. Today, we are here with the co-chairs of the Wharton India Economic Forum, Divya, Rishab, and uh, Gaurav. Uh, the three of them are students at Wharton who've come together with their classmates to put together a very interesting India-focused summit. Um, when I was in, at Wharton, I also helped out with marketing uh, for the forum, so it's interesting that all of us are coming uh, together to have this conversation. But 2020 is a really exciting year. So much has happened. Uh, the whole business model of conferences, uh, the whole MBA experience, uh, all of it has changed. So we're going to hear from uh, the three co-chairs. I'm going to ask them a bunch of questions about their MBA experience, their backgrounds, of course. But uh, we'll try and um, understand what does an online conference, student-run conference, really look like. Why should this exist? What are some things that they don't know? What are the unknown unknowns, et cetera? So without further ado, let's dive in. So welcome Divya Rishabh Gaurav. Uh, tell us a bit about yourselves. We would love to know. Let's start with you, Divya. Sure, I can, I can go first. Um, I, well, I came into Wharton uh, after a few years of working in both government and consulting, but um, I started out as an undergraduate from Yale. I uh, majored in biology and also hold a certificate in public health. Um, I then went on to move back to India, work with the government of Delhi in the chief minister's office on making Delhi safer for women. Uh, and the reason to move back was, of course, precipitated by the Nirbhaya incident. Um, so I then worked with the police, with the judiciary, etc., uh, on this objective, and then moved on to working at the Bitspan Group, which is a strategy consulting um, group that's focused exclusively on providing services to mission-driven organizations for social impact, um, you know, worked on their healthcare practice and the government advisory practice, uh, and then uh, applied to Wharton because I actually wanted to start something of myself. Um, and uh, Wharton's been really helpful. I'm on my way to hopefully launching something soon. It's called Pinky Promise, and it's a reproductive healthcare startup for women. So that's a little bit about me at Weave. Uh, my core objective is, in addition to working with Rishabh and Gaurav on speakers and structuring the conference, etc., it's also in marketing the conference. Uh, so I've had a lot of interesting things to learn about how to market a conference and kind of um, make it an attractive proposition for people during the uh, pandemic and online virtual times. So happy to share that, of course. Thanks for having awesome. me. Uh, delighted to learn more about the conference and Pinky Promise and uh, all the other experiences that you have. Risha? Yes, firstly, thanks for having us. And a little bit of background about me. So like Gaurav and Divya, I'm a second year MBA student at Wharton. I have an undergrad from SRCC in Delhi, BCom Honors, and I'm also a chartered accountant. Before Wharton, I worked in Constant Young for a couple of years. I worked in this mobile gaming startup called GameZop for a while. And then I've also worked in Bharti Airtel, where I joined as a young leader, as they call it, in the leadership development program. Spent a year working in different functions in the company and then moved on to my final role, which was in the central treasury team, where I worked closely with the CFO and the treasurer on different strategic initiatives and also worked on the mobile money uh, called Airtel money, which, uh, which functions in Africa. At least I worked in Africa for that product. At Wharton, I've been working with this fintech startup called Finmark, and it's been a really exciting time. Uh, I'm hoping to move into fintech full time as well. So uh, really excited about that. And again, happy to talk about Weave in more detail, but just as a, as a quick overview, I, of course, work with Gaurav and on the speakers. Uh, part of the conference, but also work on ops and finance, which is very interesting because ops in a digital uh, conference are very different from how they would be in a, in a conference. But yes, happy to dive more into any of this and more uh, as we speak further. Thank you, Rishabh. Gaurav? Yeah, um, so thanks a lot again for having us. Uh, so I'm uh, a second year MBA student as well, along with Rishabh and Divya. And uh, before, before Wharton, I was uh, working with uh, Bearing Private Equity Asia. Uh, it's a 20 billion AUM uh, buyout focused shop. So I was there for three years, um, looking at control investments in Asia and cross-border deals, across financial services uh, and IT sectors primarily. 
Uh, before Bering, I spent a couple of years with Rothschild Investment Banking in Singapore, where I was primarily doing infrastructure M&A uh, for clients in Southeast Asia. And uh, before Rothschild, uh, I did my undergrad from IIT Bombay. I uh, did a major in electrical engineering and minor in computer science. Um, so coming back to Wharton, so Weef was one of the things uh, that I had on my mind when uh, I applied to Wharton as well, something I wrote in my MBA application. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to be at this point where we are less than two weeks away from the conference. And uh, like when I see at what we have achieved so far in terms of the speaker lineup and the rest of the things, everything coming together, uh, I'm already feeling uh, kind of uh, proud of what the team has achieved so far. But uh, specifically in terms of my responsibility, uh, in addition to working on the speaker segment with uh, Rishabh and Divya, um, I'm also looking at sponsorship this year. And this year has been particularly very different. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary of the conference, so a milestone, and uh, first virtual conference ever. So we are happy to dive down into those topics as well as we go along. But thank you again for having us. One quick point yes, of uh, interesting thing is I just realized that both Gaurav and I have both actually written about WEF in our applications. And interestingly, I had a member of the like the admissions interview ask me about that because I wrote written about it in my uh, essay. So yeah, I don't know if there are any aspiring MBA applicants and stuff, but um, it's very interesting that both of us have actually out of the three mentioned WEF in our uh, applications. Yeah, no, there are thousands of application, applicants on Network Capital. They will actually find this really insightful. So 25th year, uh, first virtual conference, lots going on. The three of you have really eclectic backgrounds. You've done really interesting stuff before. Tell us, how did you all become co-chairs? What we're really wanting to understand is that how does uh, what an India Economic Forum organize itself? It's student run entirely. So tell us about the process. Yes, so I can talk about how the team is organized and a little bit about the overall process of selection. So the way it works is that we are a team that spans across both the years of the MBA and also across undergrads that are pen undergrads. And it's an entirely student run conference. So everybody on the team is a student. Currently we are five coaches, three of us, of course, and two other, other coaches, they become Mithil and Anuj Vikram who are specifically working on the startup challenge side of things for, for we. And under us, we've divided ourselves into different teams, ops and finances one, speakers, uh, which you know is a cross-functional team. And then there's sponsorship, which Gaurav is heading, one that Divya is heading, and of course, startup challenge. Like I said, Devika and Anuja are heading. And under everybody, there's a, there's a whole team of uh, undergrads and first year Wharton MBA students. And in terms of the selection process, the way it works is that the coaches who are uh, going out, the outgoing coaches, they select the incoming coaches for the next year. And the selection process involves filling out a detailed application, much like you would for actually an MBA program, and then going through an interview process with all of them, demonstrating that you have an interest in WEF. Uh, and also demonstrating uh, how you will bring your past experience to actually make week successful. Call up the way, feel free to add uh, if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah, that, that sums, up, sums it up very nicely. Uh, just one additional point is that while we have uh, tried to organize ourselves into different teams, uh, but we all remain very fluid uh, in the sense of just helping across the function as and when the uh, work is required, for example, uh, as we are getting closer to the conference, marketing is some one of the things that is uh, at the top of our minds. Um, but but throughout the process, it's like one whole team, and the objective of that whole team is to ultimately deliver a very successful conference. Super. Um, how did uh, all of you decide the theme of the conference? And uh, when you applied, I'm sure that you didn't uh, figure out coronavirus was going to strike with full fury. Um, Tell us more about the process of selection of the theme and uh, the various rounds of pivoting that was required to pull this off. I think when we started thinking about our, the theme was the first thing we obviously had to decide on as a group of chairs because 
that would then pave way for the kind of panels we'd have, the kind of people we'd call, etc. And that was when um, coronavirus had just hit us. Uh, Wharton had just gone virtual. And the guidelines were not yet set, right, in terms of, number one, like, how long are we going to be in this state of suspended animation? Um, what's going to happen from just a programming point of view, but also what's happening to the economy? Because what an India Economic Forum doesn't just focus on specific industries, it actually focuses on providing a broad outlook associated with India and bringing in so many leaders and representatives together to weave a, a narrative. So I think we realize that we really have to keep it current uh, and we have to keep it focused on um, things that we believe India would have to um, think about and be very deliberate about as it attempts to overcome the economic, social um, ramifications of a pandemic of this sort. So is, it, is there, is there going to be a COVID recession in India, for example, is something we talked about. Uh, we talked about how we can um, fortify our manufacturing base, how the government can continue to implement its vision for um, how it sees economic growth in India happening, despite this uh, pandemic situation that's been thrown upon it. And what are our roles as representatives of businesses to kind of um, support that vision or, or uh, be a part of that vision? So I think with all of these thoughts together, we deliberated back and forth and went on for I think a few meetings and our meetings lasted for like many hours. We then thought, you know, India, self-reliant, resilient and reignited. This would actually be our theme because it accurately portrays number one, the challenges that India faces right now, but also um, helps us understand the kind of growth trajectory that we need to carve out for ourselves that is, um, that helps us reach a path of resurgence um, as opposed to something that, um, unfortunately, you know, for example, as opposed to a negative outcome. So yeah, and, and Gaurav and Rishabh, feel free to add, but this is, we went through quite a deliberate process. Yeah, I mean, as uh, Rishabh and Gaurav answer, uh, I, I think our listeners would really want to understand the self-reliant aspect of it, because that would be a tricky terrain, right? Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, is, is, uh, is something that is being spoken about much, but uh, can you really solve for a pandemic being Atmanirbhar or self-reliant? That's an interesting question. It's, it's a question that requires debate. And I think that's the kind of question that uh, we've attempts to explore as well. So tell us more about that aspect of it, uh, Gaurav, uh, Divya, and Rishabh. Yeah, I can take a stab at that and Rishabh and Divya, please add. So, um, Utkush, what you said pretty much answers it in the sense we, what in the Economic Forum, is a student-run conference and uh, it's a platform to promote debate on topics that are relevant to India. And while we have it as part of our theme, um, the idea is that we understand there are two sets of views on it, uh, one supporting the self-reliance and Atmanibar Bharat, then other uh, being more careful and thinking about what could go wrong down that route. Um, and precisely that is our objective as, as a, uh, organizers of the conference. And you will see that across our panels and uh, the different speakers and fireside chats that we have, uh, that through questions and uh, audiences Q&A and the moderators would bring up this topic across different sectors and industries to see whether that vision makes sense and what would take for that vision to, uh, to, to, for, for the country to see through that vision or what are the pitfalls of going down that route? And because we're like completely apolitical, I think that we have the luxury of calling in people um, who will be able to give us some more guidance um, on what this vision actually means for India, right? So we have Nitin Gadkari, for example, who um, would be speaking about this topic, who has spoken about this previously, but then right now there are a lot more questions that emerge every single day as we look at MSMEs and self-reliance for MSMEs, for example, which are a large driver of employment um, in India. We also have transportation and infrastructure, which is a huge barometer of our economic development. Uh, similarly, we have the former finance minister, P. Chidambaram, who will also be speaking at Weave. Um, and we also have heads of um, companies like Facebook, or we have General Atlantic, we have... Um, 
you know startups represented like misho and 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 snapdeal so you have so many different points of view from the ground up all the way to that like you know birds eye view level uh, where where we we'll actually be able to decompose and break it down does self reliant actually means insular or does it mean um putting us on a sui generis path of development we're not so sure about that we don't we don't know what that means right now so it'll be really interesting for us to understand everyone's points of view yeah 100% um and how about um the speaker selection how, what's the process of figuring out who to invite how to invite what's the hustle involved give us a flavor into the boiler room yeah we we spent endless hours also on this uh this planning involved uh so much you know effort on our part which we were really enjoying while we were putting it in so obviously once we finalized our themes we we made a list of different topics that you know each of us were personally interested in and which we felt that were being the hotly debated topics around the country and based on that uh, and based on you know and pulling all of our interests together and seeing which ones all of us as a team feel very passionate about while still ensuring that they stay relevant to the economy and the country we then came up with a list of three panels that we have currently on uh, at the conference so the first panel is tech for bharat which is how to ensure that 1.3 billion indians are enabled through technology and not just people living in say the metros the second is Uh, a panel on pharma and that of course you know like you mentioned was one of the uh, covid specific panels that we thought was very relevant to have as given the challenges that covid has thrown and and give it important it to move on from this for the world india does play a very important part there being a significant cog in the global supply chain and we felt that a panel on pharma is going to be extremely relevant So that's how we zeroed down on pharma as a second panel. And third panel is uh, how to make India a global sporting powerhouse. And the reason for this panel was uh, to highlight the importance that sports, as a segment of entertainment, continues to play a significant part uh, in in India from a viewer standpoint, but also as a career from a player standpoint. And how we can make sure that India one day could potentially reach the levels that uh you know a, a developed country like us is at both in terms of training as well as in terms of actual performance in the various events so this is how we kind of zeroed down on the three panels that we wanted to have and apart from panels we also have a list of really exciting fireside chats and the way we went about planning those fireside chats was to ensure that our audiences can get a 360 view of the economy through different lenses and the bears alluded to this in in her previous answer saying that you know we have mr gadkari mr chidambaram bringing in that political viewpoint you know and and an ex finance minister view, viewpoint for example we have mr amitab khan from niti aayog bringing in that bringing in that administration viewpoint right we have representation from startups again bringing in a very different viewpoint and we also have uh, people like ms nisa godrej Uh, Mr. Goenka, you know, who are doing very successful businesses that were, you know, family business or legacy businesses, but they've managed to transform them into modern business. And uh, so all of these together, together, it brings a very uh, well-rounded 360 view to the conference. No, I think we were looking for diversity in all respects. Um, so i think that diversity is something that we and inclusiveness is something that we emphasized on as a prelude panel even in november we actually had uh, ms indira jaising the former um, you know additional solicitor general in fact the first female asg of uh, india we had uh, manisha gerotra from moelis and we had nupur garg who is the founder of win pe which is basically women in pe talk about um, experiences as women in the industry and how to you know climb up power so we thought that this conference um, even in our speaker selection in our panels etc uh, we wanted to ensure that um, the voice was representative and diverse in every aspect so it took a lot of deliberation um, which which was very enjoyable i think because it really 
um, brought us to this point where we're very proud of our speakers and our panels. Um, we also, I think, one thing I want to add, Rishab, to what he, had, what to what Rishab said, is the fact that because it's virtual, we didn't want to just stack it up with panels. It's something that we see a lot of conferences doing. Um, there's just one panel after the other the whole day, and you know, people tune in and tune out. We didn't want to do that. Um, we wanted to have fireside chats and panels, of course, because we wanted to be an intimate experience. We wanted people to feel like they're sitting in the front row um, at the St. Regis, where we typically hold our event, um, and they have the opportunity to later on walk up to any of these speakers and talk to them. In fact, we have you know, requested all the speakers to devote uh, some time, especially the panelists, to devote some time to be able to talk to students um, and, and professionals after uh, this experience. So I think people who end up buying tickets and registering um, at Weave, we, we're sending them in, uh, like a Google form to fill out so that we're able to like figure out who can have these interactions and match them. I've never seen this before. I've, I've seen like tables and those kind of things in other conferences, but I've not seen um, this kind of an opportunity to just spend 20 minutes with the head of Facebook, for example, and you know talk about what happened in the panel. Uh, that's not there in the virtual medium, and we've worked really hard to kind of bring that in um, to to Weave. How are you doing that? Uh, because that is uh, so difficult. And uh, while you answer that, if the three of you can also tell us how your MBA experience has been, um, you know, altered because of this pandemic. A lot of people are curious about what happens to an MBA amidst the pandemic, and I think the three of you are perhaps in different places coordinating a virtual conference. Um, talk to us about the messy bits. Talk to us about how your class schedules are, because I would imagine it's not a walk in the park. 